On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, Tesla takes bold action to solve their bodywork backlog problem, the EPA is holding up your 100D delivery, Elon Musk makes a literal bet on the Power Pack 2, and more. What's happening, friends? Ryan McCaffrey with you here on Ride the Lightning, the unofficial Tesla podcast for episode 84 on March 12th, 2017. A uh, panting, happy, relaxing Maggie the Boxer joins me uh, as well, of course. And I hope you've had a good week. I've had a pretty good week. I've been enjoying the new Nintendo Switch. If you have not checked this out yet, you've probably heard about it. Maybe you've got kids asking about it. Maybe you've got one for yourself. But my goodness, Zelda is so good. It is one of the best games in a while. I'll tell you, for, for Tesla use, that Switch is going to come with me on uh, road trips where I know that they're going to be supercharger stops. That is going to be an excellent way to pass the time at superchargers is just bust out the Switch, whether it's Zelda or some other game. Just, cr- just grab it and you, you'll be charged up before you know it. But anyway, a lot of interesting little stories this week. Uh, nothing sort of earth shattering, but just a, again, a, there's always something, I say it all the time, there's always something interesting going on with Tesla. And so I start this week with uh, the fact that you may recall uh, that, that this has come up a couple times in calls and, and other places. Been talking uh, on a couple of recent episodes here about Tesla's body shop backlog problem, particularly in Tesla hotspots like Southern California and Marin County here in Northern California. Well, Tesla is now taking emergency action on that front as they are going to add 300 new authorized body shops because these are all third-party shops. You, you can't take the car. Uh, Tesla doesn't do the body work themselves. But uh, they're authorizing 300 new body shops in the, quote, next few weeks following... Uh, I mean, this has been building for some time. Again, we've had calls on this show, but there was the sort of, I guess, the straw that broke the camel's back was a post from a Tesla owner on Motley Fool, uh, which was about how his his car has been not in his possession for eight months just and still not back in his hands, waiting for repairs after he was rear-ended. So this prompted Tesla's president of global sales and service, John McNeil, to address a thread on the Tesla Motors Club forums. He posted there saying, quote, We are applying brute force to this immediately. We will have individuals on our team personally manage each car on behalf of our customers that are in third-party body shops. Uh, this, it was a very, very long post. I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but he goes on to also say, We're also going to increase our approved shop count by 300 over the next few weeks, as well as eliminating poor performing shops. If you have an issue with a shop, please private message me directly, and our team will advocate and manage your repair. Tesla owners will get the service they expect from us, period. Well, it's, you know, it's unfortunate that it took something very public like this, uh, this Motley Fool piece, this, uh, this owner who, who wrote this up for Motley Fool, but, you know, it's unfortunate that it did take something that public to goose Tesla into action. But, you know, sometimes, I mean, kind of no matter what your line of work, sometimes you need that wake-up call that for something that may have seemingly been obviously right there, but, you, you know, sometimes you just need that wake-up call to catalyze you and get you going. So, uh, glad to see Mr. McNeil and the Tesla team Taking action on this, uh, hopefully, you know, particularly in those those hot spots, you know, anywhere it needs it. But but uh, Southern California, and Northern California, both both definitely in dire need based on multiple accounts in my both my personal life uh, and from callers here on the show. So that is good news. Uh, but you know what I wanted to say about this as well is, I mean, I hate to look a gift horse in the mouth on this, but 
Tesla's gonna need to do a lot more than this. Not today, not tomorrow, you know, not in the next few weeks as they're doing with this this round of 300, but they're, they are going to need a, to do a lot more than this soon if, in fact, the Model 3's body is aluminum, which is what we have confirmed as of now, and I, I've talked about in reference to this exact topic on uh, on recent shows, because, you know, as most of you are aware, Aluminum is not the automotive industry standard for for uh, body stamping. It's not the material generally used. I mean, sure there are a, there are a, a handful of cars out there, but but hardly a majority. By and large, the the overwhelming majority of cars have have steel bodies, which means that not every body shop is trained and certified in aluminum repair. So this isn't simply a matter of Tesla just calling 300 body shops uh, around the country to say, "Hey, let's uh, let's let's make this happen quickly." I mean, there there will be some uh, extensive certification and verification needed that that these uh, shops will be able to effectively manage aluminum repair. But a good step, nevertheless, a good step in the right direction. So uh, if you are if your car if you uh, are worried about this or currently are caught up in this. This is good news for all of us. Next this week, the 100Ds, which of course finally came along in January. You've been able to order one since then, as we predicted shortly after. You okay over there, Mangs? He's sneezing a little bit, kind of coughing. You okay? All right, you're giving me the you're giving me a look that's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, the 100Ds when it did become available right after that last referral period ended in mid-January. And so Tesla's been accepting orders from them for some time. And in fact, there are a number of the, the first round of 100Ds that are ready to be delivered, but they cannot get into their owner's hands because the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, has not signed off on the new version, the new variant yet, which is a requirement before the cars can be sold. So Tesla says that they anticipate that uh, it happening very, very soon. In fact, one owner on the Tesla Motor Club forums posted an email from their delivery specialist that said, in part, quote, we are told that we should, in all caps, be available to deliver these Model uh, S vehicles as early as this weekend end quote. But I'll tell you, I would be I would be pretty upset, not necessarily at Tesla. I mean they I suppose they bear some of the blame for, you know, you could always make the argument that, well, Tesla shouldn't have started selling them until they had that EPA certification. Now hopefully this is all going to be a moot point, possibly by the again, by the time this show airs, which tends to happen to me a lot, but uh, in fact, more on that later in the show about things happening after I record and before you hear it. But yeah, hopefully it'll, it will in fact be resolved soon. But but yeah, I'd be upset if I placed an order for a 100D. I mean, that's a that's a you know not a cheap order. You're looking at an eighty ninety thousand dollar plus order right there, and you want to get your car, and the, the the government's holding it up before Tesla can hand it over to you. Now, before you ask, Tesla can get fined a lot of money if they deliver these cars without the EPA sign-off. So they're not going to do it because they already did it and they got busted. Back in the Roadster days, they delivered over 600 Roadsters without EPA approval on the Roadster and they ended up having to pay a fine totaling about $275,000, which, hey, that's the equivalent of two max-equipped Roadsters. Which, you know, if, considering that they were delivering or they were building 25 cars a week, I think, at that, in the, or at least in the early days. I mean, that's, that, that was a, a substantial dent, a substantial penalty right there. But uh, if you do, if you are a, a Ride the Lightning listener who does have a 100D that you're waiting for, keep a close eye on this. Uh, just, you know, keep your ear to the ground. You probably don't need to bother your delivery specialist because their hands are tied and there's going to be nothing. I mean, I'm sure they'll reach out as soon as they get the green light because the thing about this is it's March 12th as the the publish date here, late March 10th as I record this week. But uh, 
the end of the quarter is coming up. March 31st is the end of the quarter, and you know Tesla's always making a big end of quarter push to get as many deliveries in the books and signed off before the quarter ends so that they can report those in the Q2, or pardon me, well, it'll be the, the, finance, the fiscal year Q1 results. So uh, it is very much in Tesla's interest to get this signed off on by the EPA very, very soon. To that end, I would expect Elon to get involved personally uh, if in some way, somehow, he'll find the right person to talk to uh, if he has not done so already. So uh, keep an eye out for that. This, uh, again, shouldn't shouldn't hopefully be a, a story after this week, but for the moment, it is holding up a number of cars, which is unfortunate both for Tesla and especially for the near future owners of those cars. Speaking of Elon, he ha- placed a literal bet on Power Pack 2. Uh, he has offered to install 100 megawatts worth of Power Pack 2 power in South Australia in order to help alleviate some grid woes that they've been having down there. Uh, this comes on the back of Tesla's VP of Energy Products and the former CEO of Solar City, who has remained with the company in this new role, uh, Lyndon Rive, attended the Australian launch of Power Pack 2 this past week. And while he was there, he said, quote, we don't have 300 megawatts sitting there ready to go, but I'll make sure they are. We could install everything and get it up and running within 100 days. Elon followed up on this on Twitter saying, Tesla will get the system installed and working 100 days from contract signature or it is free. That serious enough for you? Question mark. And he he wasn't saying that in a in a in like a rude or mean way. Uh, I just realized, like, I kind of read it that way. It's not what I meant. But after that, it got actually, it got more serious. So Elon uh, made a follow-up tweet that said, just spoke with Jay Weatherall, premier of South Australia. Very impressed. Government is clearly committed to a smart, quick solution. Uh, And then now uh, Weatherall responded saying, Today, I had a positive discussion with Elon Musk regarding his battery proposal. Many local, national, and international businesses have come to us with proposals in the week since we announced our plans to intervene in the broken national energy market. We will be releasing our energy plan soon. Uh, This is so, uh, this was helped brokered by uh, a gentleman uh, whose last name is uh, Cannon Brooks. He He's uh, playing sort of facilitator here, and he said he's been flooded with offers to help raise the money to help take help South Australia take Elon up on his offer. And he says, the reaction has been overwhelming. My phone hasn't stopped buzzing. The support is flooding in both from individuals in terms of, hell yes, and from corporates who are asking, can we buy power? Can we contribute dollars? Uh, Cannon Brooks is from the Atlassian. I'm probably saying that wrong. I apologize to our... And I know I've got Australian listeners down there. He says, I need seven days to try and sort out politics and funding. I'm excited to get this off the ground. Electrek estimates that this is about a $50 million project and thus a $50 million bet that Elon Musk is placing on this. And I'll tell you what, that's one way to drum up business. To turn, (laughs) turn it into what is effectively a dare. You're daring your customer to turn you down in this situation. It's it, This is very much something I feel like Elon would do and obviously is doing. And I'll tell you, I, again, I, I say it a lot on this show, maybe not as much recently. I haven't had, had a reason to do so, but I've said this a number of times before for you longtime listeners. I would never bet against Elon Musk. And he has bet $50 million or so that this is going to happen uh, and happen on the, the expedient time frame. So I'll bet you Elon gets this done successfully. Just watch. This is, this is what Elon does, these kinds of things. And I'll tell you, if he does, it, it advances his goal, which is to accelerate the, the world's transition to sustainable energy. And it's, it's great. It's free. Well, Sort of. Well, yeah, it'll, it would end up being free marketing for Power Pack 2. And it's just goodwill. You know, it's it's only going to get more governments on board. You know, they already have the, 
that LA substation. They've got Kauai. Uh, the and now if they were to add this in, in South Australia too, that's that's all. That's another you know another trophy in the in the Tesla Energy slash Solar City trophy case. So uh, let's keep our eyes on this one. Let's set the clock for about a hundred days and see what happens. Next this week is the potpourri of Tesla stories over the past seven days continues. We know that the Model S has terrified, just straight terrified, many of its competitors, either publicly or or privately, because you know we don't always hear admissions of that from competitors. But what we do know, without beyond a shadow of a doubt, are the sales numbers of luxury cars over the past two years, and we've seen the Model S absolutely devour the lunches of pretty much everybody else in the, in, in the class, whether it's the Mercedes S-Class, the BMW 7 Series, uh, the Audi A8, etc. Now, here, uh, we have a rare moment of candor at the Geneva Motor Show this week, and it comes from Volkswagen CEO Herbert Dies, who says that Tesla has been pushing the benchmark in the segment, in the electric segment, and that Volkswagen had to rethink their plans for an electric Phaeton. Now, the Phaeton, if you're not familiar, is effectively the Volkswagen version of the A8. It's their large, uh, mo- most luxurious sedan. Uh, that, In fact, I guess it's the largest car that Volkswagen builds, probably, unless there's an SUV that might be a tad larger, but it's certainly the largest car. Anyway, uh, this comes via auto car. This is a quote from Herbert Dies. He says, we were quite far advanced with the next Phaeton, but it became clear it wasn't enough of a leap forward. A modern large saloon, which of course, if you're not familiar, saloon is the uh, common European phrasing for sedan. Uh, so the, a modern large saloon has to be competitive and have an advantage over the Tesla, which is the benchmark and in many regions dominates the segment. Now, if we go back there, we have to take Tesla seriously, and of course, that is what we are doing with our electric strategy, end quote. How cool is it to hear that refreshing bit of honesty? Uh, now, of course, Volkswagen's had to eat a lot of crow uh, over the past week. They, uh, they, the sort of their admission of guilt with the whole diesel scandal was, was made uh, official. They'd said they were going to plead guilty to those uh, accusations. They, in fact, did this past week. So, uh, But it, nevertheless, that doesn't change the fact that it's good to see Volkswagen say, hey, look, these guys are doing it, and we've got to step up our game if we want to have any hope of competing and, and having success in that segment of the market. So uh, refreshing. I appreciate the candor from Herbert Dies and uh, would love to see it from more automakers. Better yet, let's see better electric cars. Now, we're, we're starting to see them. You know, the Bolt is out. I'll tell you, uh, just on a side note, I'm starting to see, granted, I live in the Bay Area. I live in San Francisco where it's, you know, very much, it is a bubble in a lot of ways. Uh, I mean, I, I, I can't even keep track of, you know, when I drive down the peninsula to various appointments, I, I, I lose count of Model S's. I've taken to counting the X's instead. Because two, three, four years ago, I would count the Model S's. Like, oh, there's one, there's there's one, and oh, I saw five of them today. Can't even keep track anymore. They're just one after another, after another, after another. Especially if you go south out of San Francisco, down 101 uh, in the morning, like during rush hour. So you're cruising out of the city, and you just kind of look over on the other side of the freeway at the northbound lanes of the, the peninsula folks coming up into San Francisco, you will see a near endless stream of Model S's. Like seriously, every, probably just count count off like every 10 seconds and just glance your head over, you'll probably see one. But in any case, uh, I forgot where I was going with that. Completely lost my train of thought. But uh, yeah, it's it, bottom line. Oh, I was starting to say the Bolt. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm now starting to see the Bolt all over the place as well, which is great. You know, it's I've seen it in a number of colors now. Uh, I've seen it in sunlight. I've seen it, you know, up close. I haven't been in it yet, 
I uh, saw a buddy of mine that, that did get one who lives nearby, and I, he's invited me over to check it out. I just haven't been able to uh, as of yet, but I, you know, it's good to see the bolts out there. Uh, I presume, given the number of them I see, that the, the local dealers, the San Francisco slash Bay Area dealers, are actually offering them and selling them and not, you know, trying to bury them or, or, uh, sort of dissuade people from getting them. But yeah, you know, the bolt, it's, uh, it's, as I, as I've said before, after I got my sort of first good look at it, you know, it's a, I, I'm glad it's there and, and it's got great range and, uh, it, but looks, you know, looks wise, it's just sort of, it's wallpaper, you know, it's, it's not a sexy car, but it's, I don't think it's a, a leaf like disaster either on the design front, but anyway, uh, veering off topic a little bit there. Moving on, uh, remember last week when I discussed Elon saying that he would implement that, that uh, fan-made Tesla commercial competition idea that a fifth grade girl wrote him a letter about? Well, uh, I got hit with the same curse that whacks me all the time on my Xbox show, Unlocked, at IGN, where, where news, fresh news hits right after I record, and then there's nothing I can do about it because it's all recorded, done, and edited, and, and publishing. So, uh, yeah, that happened to me with this. I, you know, I did do the story, but in the, in, the, in the window between when I recorded and when you heard the show, the official details went out. So uh, let me update you now. The competition is called Project Love Day, and it's named after that fifth grade girl. Her name is Bria Love Day. And while I was correct last week in suggesting that there would probably be a cool prize, it's not quite a car, which is what I thought might happen. But still, you get some nice recognition. So, 10 winners, just general winners, uh, they're effectively runners-up, I suppose, will get uh, feature, they'll be featured and shared on Tesla's social media channels. In fact, so as as I said last week, effectively aired, because that's as good as television these days, and similar reach with how fragmented everything on television is with 6,000 channels. Three top winners, uh, so the the top three winning prizes will receive additional promotions, so the, so you got the the seven people that'll get, that'll get promoted on social. The top three of of the, the ten will get Additional promotions. I don't know. You know that could be a second tweet, a second Facebook post. I'm not quite sure there. But then one grand prize winner will be invited and introduced, invited to and introduced at a future Tesla product launch event. Tesla will pay for reasonable travel expenses and accommodations for two people for two nights. So uh, the thought I had here was, you know, I don't want to. I guess I don't want to quite abandon my prediction just yet. Is you know I had I, the thought I had was well, you know if they're gonna bring you on stage, maybe they'll give you a car when you're on stage. So uh, d- that's me <laughs> purely speculating. Don't enter the contest thinking you're gonna get a car, but if you would like to participate, go to Tesla.com/project-loveday. Loveday is all one word. You've got until May 8th to get your entry in, and it's got to be 90 seconds or less. If you go to that site that I just mentioned, the Tesla site, you will see all the terms and conditions over there, all the rules and everything. Two more stories this week. As I said, sort of an an, an, uh, interesting potpourri of things across the board. Now, I've talked many, many times about the state-by-state battles that Tesla is having to wage against the North American Dealers Association in order to win the war that is being waged against Tesla's direct sales model. Well, good news this week. Tesla won what I am calling the Battle of Wyoming. They won that battle this week. The Wyoming legislature approved a bill that will enable Tesla to sell its vehicles directly to customers in the state without having to go through third-party dealerships. Uh, And here's the fun part. Tesla business development and policy manager Daniel Witt 
drove from Denver, which is the closest, the, the currently the closest Tesla location. It drove from Denver to Cheyenne in a Model S in order to give test drives to legislators. A Wyoming Tesla sales and service center is now expected to open soon. So great news there. Uh, if any of you are in Wyoming and maybe you have a Model 3 reservation, that's going to be especially good news for you. It's You'll have to go a lot uh, less far to get your car. Uh, and no surprise, by the way, that test drives help seal the deal because as I can attest to personally, uh, you know, my first Tesla test drive was the Roadster and that's what that's what set me on the path that has led me to where I am sitting here recording this for you now uh, and having and having my name on the Model 3 reservation list. Driving is believing with these cars. Those of you that have driven them or own them know. You are you know exactly what I'm talking about. Driving or you know even riding is is enough, but driving especially when you when you are making that connection with that go pedal with that accelerator and you press that thing and you get that instant linear full torque response my goodness that's all it takes that is all it takes so uh good job daniel witt for making the haul in an s from denver out to cheyenne and uh kudos to the legislators for taking those test drives taking those test rides considering this and seeing hey this is what's best for the people of Wyoming, giving them the option to purchase their vehicle through directly through Tesla if that is how they would like to purchase that, that particular car. So uh, thumbs up all around right there. Finally this week, uh, a quick message for my New York friends. If any New York listeners are out there, thanks to a bill just passed by the state legislature and signed off on by Governor Cuomo, you, my friends, now have access to a state electric vehicle rebate that uh, will get you up to $2,000. That's great. The California one's $2,500. Uh, a lot of the, the ones that are offered around the country are smaller than that. This is one of the larger rebates. So uh, this, this is awesome news for Model 3 reservation holders, and I have to ex- expect that there are a lot of you in New York. New York's a very populous state. And uh, I suspect, I've, in fact, I know for a fact that I've got a lot of listeners in the state of New York. So good news for all of you folks. Uh, this, this quote now is via Electrek, and it's from State Assemblywoman Amy Paulin, who uh, is, hails from Westchester County, and she heads the Assembly's Energy Committee. She said, quote, We want to make electric vehicles a mainstream option. They are becoming more affordable, and we need to encourage them. Yes, yes, Assemblywoman Paulin. That is that is exactly the thinking that uh, we need more of from our local and federal uh, elected officials. That is great stuff right there. Now, this law is going to go into effect on April first, so it's uh, your you Model Three reservation holders are all set. If you have a res- pardon me, if you have a, a, an order right now uh, from Tesla, then perhaps you're expecting it by the end of the quarter, you might want to check into this and just may- see if you need to try and hold off on your delivery until April 1st, or if, if, uh, if it doesn't matter and if you take delivery of the car, you can still file for the rebate on April 1st, but uh, it's, I suspect if that affects anybody that's listening to this, it's an extraordinarily small sliver, but Regardless, this is great. Uh, it's 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 fantastic news for everybody in the Empire State, and and hopefully this is you know the two of the biggest states in the in the country. You know this is New York and California leading by example. I mean, although I want to give a shout out, uh, Colorado doing good work in the on the incentive front. They've got a huge incentive there. Ontario as well, up in Canada, huge huge incentive. Uh, up in Ontario. So there are state and provincial governments that do get it, that are getting behind this and seeing that electric vehicles are a viable option for the future and a and one that should be encouraged. So love seeing that. Tip of the hat 
to Governor Cuomo and to the New York State Legislature. I think this is just that's that's a great way to end the news this week. Good feel good story, uh, and I will be right back to keep the good times rolling with one, two, three calls in the Ride the Lightning hotline right after this. Welcome to the Ride the Lightning hotline. I want to mention that the uh, I, I teased this last week. It took a few extra days to, to get posted, I'm, I'm afraid, but I do apologize for that. But the March edition of the Patreon-exclusive bonus show is now up for folks that pledge at the $10 or higher level. Uh, and it features calls from Eric from Australia, Walter from Vancouver Island in Canada, JF from Montreal, uh, Robert from Chicago, Eric from Ridgecrest, uh, Tyler from Michigan, and Julian from Green Bay. Uh, a lot of great topics covered on that extra bonus show. That is where all the extra Ride the Lightning calls that just don't make it into the uh, regular weekly show for one reason or another, usually time, honestly. That is where they go. So uh, do be sure to check that out if you are a $10 or higher uh, patron. And if you're not, perhaps you will consider doing so. That would be awesome. So this week, we've got three calls. Carl from Pennsylvania, Jesse from Dallas, and Cecilia in California. But before I start, I want to remind you, of course that you can call in any time. I actually only ended up getting just a small handful of calls this week. Would love to replenish the supply. If one of the many interesting stories that I covered this week is uh, inspires you to respond in some way, you can do that. If you just want to ask a question, start a discussion topic, whatever the case may be, give me a ring. It's a toll-free number, and that number is 1-888-989-8752. That's 1-888-989-TSLA. Uh, and you can also email the questions. If you just want to record something into the voice recorder on your smartphone and email me that file, you can send that to teslapodcast at gmail.com. But the toll-free hotline is uh, might be the most convenient way because you just dial it up and, and do it, and it's uh, fire and forget. So uh, I want to thank LifeOnRecord.com for supplying the Ride the Lightning hotline. So if you know someone special with an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, you could give them a unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they're special. The recordings can be podcasted or put onto a keepsake. Visit LifeOnRecord.com to learn more. We start with Carl in Pennsylvania, who uh, got some strange... News about Tesla apparel at the his nearby store. So uh, he, I think we can help Carl out here. Carl, take it away. Hi, Ryan. This is Carl from Pennsylvania. I had, I just got some disconcerting news. I went to the Tesla service center and they said that the line of clothing and accessories is being phased out. Uh, it's going to be a long time before I ever get a Tesla, but I like to show my support with the company buying like t-shirts and other little things and jackets and things like that. But uh, yeah, my, when I went there last time, they hadn't restocked and the salespeople told me that it is being phased out. Uh, why would Tesla do that? Because there's a lot of people who can't afford a Tesla, but like it just like how there are fans of Ferrari and fans of Mercedes Benz and stuff like that. They always buy the, uh, the chutch. So if you could, let me know. Bye. Well, Carl, it strikes me as uh, rather odd that Tesla would suddenly stop selling clothing. Uh, they have a bunch of really neat shirts and hoodies and jackets and things for uh, men and women and children, everybody. They've got cool stuff. In fact, I've got, I think I've said this before, I'm still waiting for the weather to get good enough to wear the, the shorts. My new favorite shirt is a, 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 te- a Heather Gray shirt that's got the Tesla block letters across the chest with Made in California underneath it. And it is super soft. Like when you pick this thing up, it's a it's a wonderful material. And uh, I'm really eager to wear it. Hopefully, it, we've had some sun, so maybe maybe it'll finally be almost time to, to break that thing out. But in any case, it strikes me as odd that Tesla would suddenly get out of the merch business because you know, customers and fans alike, what, you know, they, we like, I certainly like wearing Tesla stuff, especially, I mean, I can't afford the car yet, you know, I'm waiting for my Model 3, so the, 
the, the apparel is a way I can sort of show off my Tesla fandom. And if I were an owner, I'd still want to wear Tesla apparel because I, lo- I would love being a Tesla owner. So it struck me as odd. So I did reach out to Tesla PR and a Tesla PR rep was very kind to reply. And she said, I'm not aware of any such plans, meaning to not sell apparel anymore. She says, we're always updating and adding new apparel though. So maybe there was confusion, question mark. I'll keep you posted of any chances, uh, pardon me, any changes to the apparel line as they come. So, and that, that was my suspicion as well, is that it could have been a miscommunication on the, that your local store reps part, maybe the, the current line is discontinued and they've got a spring line coming in because it is after all early March. So, uh, rest easy, more Tesla apparel should be on the way to your store. Uh, and don't expect it to go away anytime soon, it sounds like. Happy to help out there. Let's go now to Jesse in Dallas, who calls in about the new show from the, the, the former Top Gear crew and how, uh, how it could relate to Tesla in 2017. So, Jesse, you're on the air. Hey, Ryan. This is Jesse from Dallas. Got a question for you. With the Grand Tour show coming back for a season two this autumn, have you put any thought into whether or not the guys from the former Top Gear show will be getting their hands on a Tesla? I know the relationship's been thorny in the past with Tesla, but with the Model 3 coming out, this seems like a very logical place to reintroduce. Your thoughts? Interesting question, Jesse. Now, for those of you who don't know, Jesse is referring to years ago, back in the Roadster days, when the Roadster was featured on Top Gear and Tesla ended up suing Top Gear for misrepresenting the Roadster by, uh, they, they, uh, Top Gear ended up admitting that they intentionally staged it so that the car was, would run out of battery power. You know, as, as a, I don't want to call it a bit for the show, but as a, a storyline for that episode, effectively. So, uh, thus, I, I mean, that, so that's obviously a, a significant piece of history, but I'd say it's very possible, not necessarily likely, but possible that Tesla and the, uh, you know, Jeremy Clarkson and, and the crew there could bury the hatchet and maybe do something with the P100D and or maybe the Model 3 at some point on, on their new show, uh, Grand Tour. Because, and I say that because Tesla has buried the hatchet with people in the past. The most notable example that comes to mind is Jalopnik, you know, the, their uh, car website and auto uh, industry website. And they, in, the, in Tesla's early days, they basically did nothing but trash Tesla almost every opportunity they got. But Tesla kept inviting them to media events and kept giving them access and and eventually, uh, Jalopnik started giving more balanced coverage. So I realized that's a, that's a bit of a different situation from where there was an actual lawsuit involved as there was with Top Gear. But, but I, you know, I think there is potentially a mutual gain to be had in a Jeremy Clarkson Tesla reconciliation. You know, it's, uh, that shows on Amazon Prime, I believe, and that goes out. That's there. Are obviously, a, so many people that have access to that. So, you know, if uh, Tesla wants to supply a P100D for for use on the show for for some sort of segment, I mean, I, I would have to think at this point that uh, there's no way at all that uh, that that Grand Tour could stage a similar thing, especially with the P100D gets 300 miles to the charge. So, uh, it'd be, a, I think the public would be a little less inclined to, uh, with Tesla has such an established track record now compared to the Roadster days that I just don't think that Grand Tour could get away with something like that, even if they would try it, which I highly, highly doubt they would. So we'll see. You never know. I want to finish up with Cecilia in California, who, uh, and I was talking, I think, last week or the week before about wanting to check out the the newly revised Tesla app on on smartphones uh, that they they finally gave it it just a 
what I think three year re- refresh. Like it had been a long, long time. So Cecilia gave it a shot, uh, being a fellow non owner such as myself at this point in time. Uh, Cecilia, take it away. Thank you. This is Cecilia in California. Um, I was listening to your show a couple of weeks ago, and you mentioned you wanted to try the Tesla app. Well, um, after I made my reservation, shortly after I made my reservation, I had the same idea that I wanted to check out the app um, and be ready for when I got my car. So I downloaded the app um, and I logged in, but uh, unfortunately, you need to have a car on your account in order for the app to actually let you log in. I mean, when you try, it'll tell you that you need to have a car and then it just kicks you back to the login screen. Um, I tried again with the updated app and it was the same thing. So anyway, don't waste your time unless you really want to be ready for your Model 3. Thanks. Well, yeah, I've tried it too. In fact, (laughs) I confess that I, when I did try it, which was a long time ago, I didn't delete the app on my phone. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I don't know why. So I still have the Tesla app on my phone, even though it's it's literally worthless to me at this at this stage in time. But it's there uh, now. As far as a more practical solution to the uh, to to Cecilia and I's current situation, there are walkthroughs. I mean, there there are screenshots, but there are actual video walkthroughs of the new version of the app on YouTube. If you just type in Tesla. Uh, new app. That's all you got to do and it'll pop right up. But you can definitely get a look at it and then just pretend it's your car in the when you're watching the video. That's all, that's all you got to do. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your calls this week. Again, could use, could use more uh, calls in the Ride the Lightning Hotline stash to dip into next week. So if you would like to call in with a question, comment, discussion topic, etc., Drop me a line anytime, 24-7. The toll-free number to do that with is 1-888-989-8752. Or email me your recording, uh, and the email address there is teslapodcast at gmail.com. All right, I'll be right back with a few final thoughts and notes for you right after this. All right, friends, it is uh, time to roll out here. Before I do, I want to remind you that uh, I've got a Patreon up. If you enjoy the podcast every week, you get a lot out of it, you might want to, con- if, you, if you feel so inclined to consider supporting my efforts here, I uh, would love it if you'd be grateful if you even just took a look at the Patreon page and, and uh, see what's there and maybe and see if you feel like contributing anything. No pressure, the show will go on. Uh, even if you decide not to, but I always appreciate you just taking a look and considering. So the page is patreon.com, that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash Tesla podcast. Uh, if you are purchasing a Tesla for yourself, get $1,000 off of it. The current referral period is actually ending. This is the last week of it. It really snuck up on me. So uh, last shot, at least for the moment, to get $1,000 off of your car So use this short link, put this into your browser, uh, and that will get you to your $1,000 discount to to order your car with. It's ts.la slash jeff2311. That's ts.la slash jeff2311. Abstract Ocean's got you covered for your Tesla accessory needs, whether it's stuff for your Tesla or stuff for you, or maybe stuff for your future Tesla, depending <laughs> depending on uh, what your situation is. And I mention this because the kind folks at abstractocean.com have continue to offer the listeners of this podcast a 20% discount. So get everything you want in your cart, and when you get to checkout, enter the coupon code RTLPODCAST. All, as that, do that as all one word, RTLPODCAST, and you will get 20% off. Thank you to abstractocean.com for that. Uh, let's see here. Follow me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. Again, the show's email address, if you prefer to write to me, 
is teslapodcast at gmail.com. Uh, do subscribe to Dave T's weekly Tesla newsletter. You can find that at teslaweekly.com. That's a free sign up. And teslarati.com. Staying on top of the day-to-day Tesla news and doing so in a very uh, useful and informative and up-to-the-minute kind of way. Uh, before I go, I want to thank the Patreon producers, the very, very kind folks who support the podcast at the $20 or higher level each month. And those folks, uh, the list is very, I'm so uh, humbled that it's gotten fairly long. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it backwards this time just to give the people at the, at the end of the list a little more love. Kyle Stover, Robert Maracle, John E. Ford, Michael Lester, Matthew Parra, Logan Willis, Michael Opre, Lisa Kaz, David Kittle, Alexi Heft, Michael Lucas, Scott Gillis, John Waltower, Jonathan Wales, Nick Hoffman, David Brander, ZL Klein, George Cassiopo, Wolfgang Obergen, Pete White, DJ Harbaugh, Paul Hussey, and Jeff Bartram. Most of you hopefully subscribe to the podcast so that it just downloads right to you or to your device each and every week. Uh, you can simply subscribe at uh, pretty much all the major podcast services. So iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, TuneIn, or you can pick up the RSS feed or individual downloads at the hosting website. And the URL for that is teslapodcast.libsyn, spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N, dot com. Happy electric motoring, my friends, and I will see you back next week. Mm-hmm.